Hi everyone, I'm Jonathan Truss and welcome back to my channel. Now today I'm going to guide you through step by step, sort of, how I painted this and how the painting evolved. This one's called Amboseli Giants. We've got Tim over there on the left, who sadly passed away a couple of years ago, but I managed to spend a magical week with him back in 2019. It really was quite incredible. He died of old age, which was quite amazing for a big tusker like him. I couldn't do a painting like this and not include him because uh, he is... Well, he was one of the giants of Amboseli. The other giant, of course, is Kilimanjaro at 20,000 feet, the highest mountain in Africa. Um, now, I think something like 20,000, no, 25,000 people a year climb that mountain for some reason. They drink 75,000 litres of tea, eat 110,000 Snicker bars. I'm allergic to peanuts, so that's probably why I've never climbed it. And uh, they use 950 kilometres of toilet paper now every year. Now, don't ask me how they work that out. But anyway, look, I digress. So look, stick with me and I'll show you how I painted it. Now then, one thing I definitely need to mention before I start, apologies for the sound, the lighting and the camera work. It's just me. Now the chap that normally does it couldn't be here because of COVID restrictions. So I do apologize. Anyway, let's get going. So here we go. I'll be painting Kilimanjaro, as I said. And um, this is just the start of the painting. What I've done, I've just put in some cobalt blue, a little bit of red and white into the sky. And um, then I've sketched with my brush, actually, the general outline of the mountain. And that is indigo and alizarin crimson uh, and a little bit of white. You don't want it too dark and you don't want it too light. I actually got it a bit light to start with and then um, I had to uh, darken up a little bit. I've actually softened the left part here uh, just to keep that edge because I'm going to have my cloud base going all the way across and uh, you see a, hear a cockerel in the background. Um, this here is going to be my cloud. I've just, this bit along the bottom and along the top, that's all going to be clouds. So there's no point in putting all the detail of the mountain there because you're going to be uh, painting clouds over it and you'll have wasted many, many hours. So I've decided that uh, early on that's where my cloud base would be. Now, I may have a lighter sky at the back. It may be pinker, it may be yellow. I'm not sure yet. Um, they will still got to have the icing on the cake, as they say, the glacier on top of the mountain. This is the Amboseli side of the mountain, um, which is in Kenya, although the mountain itself is in Tanzania. Um, now, I've seen the mountain several times from this side, uh, which is always a thrill, actually. I know a lot of people like to climb up there for some reason. I've no idea why. I've never done it. It's 20,000 feet and it takes five days if you can cope with the altitude sickness. Um, so anyway, that's what I'm gonna be doing. I'm gonna be painting this and uh, stick around for the journey and I'll show you um, how to paint it. Now I started out showing you the finished results so you can see what can be achieved and um, this is how you do it. So adding some a glacier to the top of my mountain, some white, I've just toned that white down a little bit actually, it's not pure white. Just add a little bit of uh, black into it, a little bit of a crimson as well, just a tiny amount. Just getting the general shape of that glacier on top of the mountain and you can also see that i've added some highlights there uh, played around you see the shape of the glacier that is a classic sort of kilimanjaro look from the kenyan side um, i've added some highlights into the mountain i'm just playing around with the color see if i could get it and looking at all the colors on my palette here you can see that um, i had a right old uh, time with it um, in the end actually i settled with uh, liz and crimson um, indigo and white which is basically a lighter color of what the mountain was and it seemed to work quite well um, but I did experiment quite a lot with the colors on my palette and all the blues and the reds to see if I could get it you see so I used indigo crimson and a little bit of white now the clouds this is the uh, the fun bit really you can just play around with it just roll that brush around um, I've got a little bit of white, a little bit of ivory black and a little bit of crimson in there, but a tiny amount of crimson. I'm just rolling around. You have these little accidents that happen and just leave it. Just uh, play around with it. Uh, nothing's permanent here. If you don't like it, you just wipe, rub it off. Um, but um, it is good fun. I mean, uh, you've just got to think about clouds when you're doing it and uh, just have a lot of fun with it. Now, put the mid distance in here. You can see those greens aren't green at all, actually. It's burnt umber. Now, apologies again for the refraction of light, it's making it hard to see, but adding burnt umber and blue creates almost a yellow, but it's not a yellow. If I added yellow into that mid distance and the far distance, it would bring your distance uh, far, far more, uh, nearer to the foreground and it would kill the distance of your painting. So you don't want to do that. Be careful with yellow, your yellows.
Okay, you can see that I've added a lot of the mid-distant colors here. I've put more detail in um, with a distance. You've got to get the distance right here. Now I've overdone the greens a little bit, as you can see, but I'll push that back and I'll glaze over it later on. But I've added those yellows in the foreground. You can see how the yellows down here on the bottom, that's not water, by the way, it just has the undercoat, I haven't painted it yet at the bottom. I've added the yellows and uh, just to the foreground. And if I put those in the back, it would have really, really upset the, <laughs> the, uh, the, the, uh, the depth of the painting. Now, I've just added some water here. I was just playing around with the composition to see whether it works or not. It's looking quite crude at the moment. I'm just playing around to see what works and what doesn't work. Um, putting in these distant acacias there. That's a lot of fun doing that. And just building it up slowly with some foreground, rolling the brush around, with some adding some greens now, uh, some sac green and some uh, cad yellow as well into the foreground. I'm putting more highlights. Uh, I've made up my mind that some, the foreground, some of it would be lit and some of it's not. Now the elephant, when I start painting him in a moment, you'll see there's no light on him. So I had to be careful not to light the foreground where he would be, because actually he's, uh, when I took photographs of the elephant, it was quite a dull day. So the foreground is actually quite dull. Um, and I've left the background there in the, uh, on the horizon there quite bright and I'll lighten that even more as I go along. I added water here to the foreground and then decided to take it out. I was just playing with the composition to see what it, well, I did like it here and I thought it worked really, would, um, worked really well, but I decided to take that water out in the end, mainly because when I started to paint Tim in, it didn't really work, it got in the way and you'll see that in a moment. And you go to all that trouble to put uh, the foreground in and I actually quite like it. It did, does look quite nice. But the, but the water, for some reason, it just didn't work with when I started to sketch the elephant and I just knew it wasn't going to work, uh, unfortunately. Although that is quite a pleasing composition. Your eye leads you from the left through to the middle, up to the mountain. So the composition works quite well and really just making that up so, as I went along. But uh, as you'll see in a moment, I fill that in on the bottom left because it didn't really work. It's a rather grainy close-up. Um, apologies again for the, uh, the camera work. It's just me here working on my iPhone. I thought uh, I'd have some of the light coming through the clouds in the distance, picking up some of those distance. I mean, that's a long, long way away in reality. That would be several miles away. Um, but you can also see some of the detail. This is the beauty of oil as well. You can just throw it on there and it, and it just kind of works. You don't have to do a, really put any detail in. You don't have to paint blades of grass. It just works anyway rolling that brush along. So the sort of cad yellows there as well. And you can see the distance. And I've already darkened those clouds up a little bit as well. Decided I wanted those darker. Now putting in the elephant here, you can see that I've got rid of the water. That's where the water was. I've sketched the elephant in. And uh, you, you know, get a lot of trouble to paint all these trees <laughs> and then you just go and paint over it. Um, which just, it's just what you've got to do. Uh, I wasn't sure where I put the elephant and I've decided to put him there because it worked well with the composition. It has been very, very difficult to work that out before I put the uh, the landscape in and it's almost in its entirety. So I'm just darkening, uh, I'm just really throwing some raw umber, a little bit of black, just trying to get the shape of the elephant where I've sketched him. And uh, when I sketch the elephant, by the way, be careful that you don't rub off. You'll take the back oil off if it's not completely dry. Uh, so make sure that background is really dry before you start using a rubber to change your pencil strokes. Uh, looking very, very crude here, but that's how I build it up. I'll just throw the paint on the canvas for the, where the elephant is. And as soon as you see the shape of the elephant, then you can start to put in details and highlights. It's, it's a bit of an odd one. I know a lot of people would sketch that elephant in first and then work around it. But like I said, for me, uh, when the elephant isn't, uh, although it actually is, uh, I guess, the main part of the painting, it's not really the, the whole... The, the painting really is about the landscape and I didn't know where Tim was going to go before I'd finished that landscape. Now that's just the first coat of paint I put there. You can see the elephants looking very, very crude, but you get the general shape. And from there, I can see whether it's going to work or not. Now, if I decided I didn't want the elephant there then and I wanted to move him, I'd be in a lot of trouble because that background was already in. And to get those colours back would have been very difficult. Uh, the, I've just put the uh, the white where the, the ivory is going to go, the, uh, the tusks. It's not... Uh, there you go, that's a bigger picture. So you can see the general composition. Now at this stage I'm deciding that uh, the clouds aren't dark enough. Uh, we need more light coming through the clouds and I'm also going to put some rain in it as well, I think. Uh, and also I've got to paint Tim in as well, put all the detail. But you can see I've taken the water out bottom left. That's all gone now. So um, 
I think it works better. Although I did really like the water, I couldn't have put, uh, Tim had to go there from perspective point of view. I couldn't have put him higher up and I couldn't have put him lower down. So there I've just added the light through the clouds and a little bit of rain to the top left where those, those rain clouds are, uh, sort of starting to come together, brightening up the background. Obviously I put all the detail into Tim as well and uh, his tusks are in as, as, as well. Now I haven't put, now I down decided I make a big bold decision where I'm gonna put that acacia and I decided it's gonna go there. And you can see the one in the middle as well. This, it's a brave move perspective wise because that's a very big tree and the tree in the background is the same size. As you can see, that's what it looks without the trees. And we'll have another look again in a minute with the trees and you can see what a big decision you've got to make. Right, I'm just adding some uh, leaves to the foliage to the tree. You can see that I'm just rolling the brush around, uh, just trying to get the general shape. I'm not, it's a, it was a big decision again to put this tree there because I'm actually painting over the clouds here. Just rolling that brush around. You don't want to put it a uh, blanket, one big color on it because obviously you can see through the leaves. You'll see some of those clouds behind it. I'm just getting the general shape from that very small fan brush and you can use it to make little twigs like that as well. Uh, and if it doesn't go on, just thin it slightly with some thinners, just rolling it around. That uh, is um, burnt umber and a bit of the uh, blue. Now you can see that my tree here, that was a big, big, bold move, wasn't it? Well, um, I'm not liking the top of the tree. It looks like it's got icing on it um, where that cloud is. So I'm gonna change the shape of that tree in a moment, but I've also got to pull the highlights on to decide where the light is catching that tree. Uh, I've got to make um, some decisions there as well. But this is all about building up the composition. Now that's a close up of the, uh, the foliage. Now that was sap green, a little bit of cad yellow. Uh, before I've added more onto it as well. You can see the highlights have dropped into the onto the tree, just playing around with it, see what works. Sometimes I'd wipe it off, no big deal. Uh, you've got to think about what you're doing when you're, you're painting these trees, the general shape and where the light would hit it. There we are, you can see that I've actually painted the whole tree and now at the top, the cloud's gone. And I think that looks much, much better. And of course, I've also added the buffalo on the right and hopefully that's a pleasing composition. Added lots of birds too. Got a fish eagle, we've got uh, yellow bill stalks and great egrets and cattle egrets as well. Uh, <laughs> went a bit mad on the birds, but I love birds. And in the very, very distance, you can see those cattle egrets flying across there as well. And they've got some wildebeest in the very, very distant, hundreds of them, but that was just a few dabs of paint. Uh, put that uh, great egret in there as well. Uh, painted him a few times actually. There's the fish eagle. Just adds a little bit of uh, mid distance and foreground interest to the whole composition, which I rather like. And those uh, yellow bill stalks flying across. I added some dead wood to the uh, base of that tree as well. Now, when you look close up, there's nothing to it, is there? It's just that when you pull away and see the whole composition as it is, as one big painting like that, then you'll, uh, it really, uh, you can see all the details. It looks like they're fantastically detailed when perhaps they're not, but that's the magic of painting, the magic of oil painting especially. Hey, well there we are. Apologies once again for the sound, the lighting and the camera work and everything else, it was just me. Um, look, if you did like it, then please do like it and don't forget to subscribe. Uh, this one here, by the way, is a much smaller version I did from life in, right next to Kilimanjaro in 2019. You don't have to paint on a massive scale, especially if you're just starting out. I recommend you paint maybe something a little bit smaller. But look, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.